What's up guys and welcome back to The Nurse Nook. If you guys are new, welcome. My name is Alexis Nicole and I make videos all about nursing and lifestyle. So today's video is gonna be a little different because we are not talking about nursing today. We are talking about my new nose. So if you guys are not part of my Instagram community, which you should be because I update you guys there daily. Um, surprise, I got rhinoplasty in, let's see, what's today? I am less than a week away from being four months post-op. So I'm going to chat a little bit about my experience. This is the first time I'm talking about my rhinoplasty on YouTube, so um, here we go. So let me just start off by saying rhinoplasty is something that I have wanted to do since I was literally in elementary school. I used to hold my nose down because I thought that would make it smaller. And I just was, you know, honestly how sad. <laughs> but I have never really been happy with my nose. I love myself, don't get me wrong, because sometimes people try to comfort me and say, oh, you don't love yourself because you got a nose job. I think I'm great, I think I'm awesome, but I just wanted to fix my nose and that was that. So the main thing I wanted to fix about my nose was my dorsal hump. And I will add in some before and after pictures here so you guys can get a clear picture. But I had a pretty prominent dorsal hump. And so when I went into my surgeon, one of the things that I told her is like, I want a like nice smooth slope. And that's exactly what she did. I went to Dr. Sanaz Harichi in here in Houston, Texas. I will leave her information down below. But I really just wanted like a nice little slope and I just thought that was it. I was like, yeah, just fix my slope and whatever. And then when I went in for my consultation or actually my consultation was um, virtual, she, my surgeon told me like, oh, what do you think about like lifting the tip a little bit? I think you have like a little bit of a droopy tip. I think it would look better if we lift it as well as shave the hump down. And I was like, okay, I'm like, I never thought about that, but since you're pointing it out like go ahead and you know work your magic so i had a picture that was morphed this is a morphed picture this is not how i looked after and i was like actually you know what that kind of looks a lot better like i didn't realize that my tip was drooping until it was lifted and then i was like oh shoot wow how cool is that so Fast forward, I got my procedure done and life-changing. It is the best decision I've ever made. Um, my only regret is not doing it sooner. I am not doing this video in any way to promote rhinoplasty or promote plastic surgery. This is simply to just share my experience and if people are in the market for rhinoplasty, maybe to give you some insight and guidance or just like some things to know or ask about. So I wanted to go over some things that they do not tell you before getting rhinoplasty. So some things that I wasn't necessarily prepared for or things that I just didn't think about thoroughly. So one of the biggest things was my first week after rhinoplasty was pretty miserable. I could barely sleep. I had to sleep upright for at least the first week before I got my cast off. And they tell you to try to sleep upright as much as possible, but at least for the first week. And so, well, let me refrain that. Not upright, upright, but like propped up on some pillows. And so I am a slide sleeper. I sleep in the fetal position. And so for me to have to sleep on my back, on pillows was the most uncomfortable thing ever. And not only was the positioning uncomfortable, but the pressure. So a lot of people were asking about the pain that comes along with rhinoplasty, rhinoplasty and was it painful? You know what? Some people are like, oh, I felt no pain at all. Whatever, because I cannot relate. So I will say that it wasn't necessarily painful, but it was very uncomfortable. The first two days for me were painful. And so I believe I was prescribed codeine if I remember correctly. Um, and I took it for only a day or two um, post-op and then I just stuck to, um, was it Tylenol or ibuprofen? Either Tylenol or ibuprofen. I wanna say it was Tylenol because the ibuprofen would have made me bleed more um, or thin my blood and that 
was that what I wanted to do? Because I was already bruising like crazy. So I just stuck with Tylenol um, for like the few days after that. But it wasn't necessarily like, oh my gosh, I'm in pain. It was like, this is so uncomfortable. It feels like the worst cold that I've ever had in my entire life. Like there is so much sinus pressure all through here and here. Oh my gosh. And you cannot breathe through your nose at all. Like I couldn't even like blow a little, like a little piece of air and nothing. So my mouth was all nasty. Cause you know, when you're sick and you can only breathe through your mouth, it gets all like mucusy when you sleep, just uh, not the business. So sleeping was very uncomfortable. The amount of pressure that I felt was very uncomfortable. Um, one thing that I will say my surgeon prepared me very well for, she has a very, strict medication regimen that you start even before you go into surgery. So I took Arnica and Bromelin. If you are in the market for rhinoplasty, you're gonna get very familiar with these two um, herbs or medications. I took those prior to and post surgery to help with swelling um, and bruising. So because my doctor has this like strict regimen that we follow, a lot of her patients don't bruise as much as some pictures that I've seen online. She, compared to other plastic surgeons, I would say her bruising is like minimal. And of course everyone is different, um, but my bruising, for me, it to me it looks scary. I couldn't even look at the mirror, look in the mirror. It was a scary sight. But when you look at like some other pictures of rhinoplasty, I'm like, you know what, it wasn't that bad. I was definitely black and blue all through here and it was like swollen and puffy. And not only was this swollen and puffy, but my entire face swelled up. So this was like kind of out, this was like kind of protruding, but it was like all swollen together. So it didn't look that terrible, but if you like know me and know what I look like regularly, I looked a little bit like a puffer fish. So yeah, I was swollen and it was all tender to the touch. This was probably like the most tender part cause you know, I had a lot of like work <laughs> in this area. This is definitely the most tender part for me. Bleeding is also something to be aware of. When I came home from surgery initially, I had like hella blood coming out of my nose. Like it was like dripping profusely. And I'm like, oh my gosh, is this normal? Granted, it like stopped, but it would start again and then it would stop. And so they told me after surgery, um, mind you, I was very loopy after surgery. I, I obviously don't do well with anesthesia, it's extremely loopy. But um, the following day, the nurse had followed up with me and she said I bled a good bit in surgery. And so she's not surprised that I had a lot of blood um, post-op, but it was nothing that, you know, was like, you need to go back to the ER, you need to go um, call the surgeon. Thankfully, my boyfriend is a nurse practitioner and he was there with me the whole time. He was literally my uh, post-op nurse. <laughs> he was my PACU nurse. <laughs> but we even like took my blood pressure just to make sure I wasn't losing too much blood and I was fine. But I did bleed quite a bit and it was very nasty in there. And you have to like rinse your nares out with this like saline that they give you to like squirt up in there and then it sits in there and then it comes out all nasty. There's a lot of nasty things that go along with um, rhinoplasty. It was not a beautiful sight for healing at all, but um, you know, here we are now. It's all worth it. So I would say the worst part of rhinoplasty was that first week after, that's like the roughest week and after you get past that first week, honestly, it was like smooth sailing from there. Once I got my cast off, I was just like out and about like regular. Actually, even with the cast on, so I still had black and blues for like three weeks. The first week was the worst. It started kind of like disappearing um, a little bit the second week, but it was starting, it just turned like yellow and like the black and blue just kind of like settled right in this little um, underneath my eye bags. And so it wasn't like scary looking, but it was, I obviously had black eyes. 
but it wasn't too much that it couldn't be covered with concealer. So there was a time that I had black eyes, I had my cast on my nose, I had my nose cast on, and I went to the Houston Rockets basketball game like that. And the only thing that saved me was the mask. So I put my mask on and I put it up just enough to cover the cast and then I had concealer on. You, if you didn't know what was going on under, the, under that mask, you would have had no idea. But yeah, so once I took the cast off after seven days, post-op, it was pretty smooth sailing. I didn't have any stints or anything in my nares to pull out. Um, taking the actual cast off was pretty easy. It's pretty stuck on there. Um, so they just use like a solution and a Q-tip to kind of get it off. Um, and then the worst part is removing the stitches. So I had stitches inside of my nares here. I don't know if you guys can tell. Hope I don't have any boogers. But I still have, uh, you can still see my incision here, but it's very, very faint. And unless you're like, you can't really tell if there's anything there. But um, all the work was like done internally. So it was sutured up here in the front. And so they had to like get in there to remove the sutures. And that was like a little uncomfortable, but it was quick when and done over like fairly easily. Oh my God. I will say when they took the, cast off i was so scared to look at myself in the mirror that they handed me i was literally shaking i was like oh my gosh because i was terrified to look crazy or not like how i look like mind you i've had this nose for 26 years i don't know what i look like with a different nose so i was terrified to not look like myself or like look like a stranger or not like what i look like oh my god i'm so nervous I'm like shaking. Oh my god, it looks good. Okay, so as so, so, so I thought. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. And the thing that was worrying me was while I had the cast on, you can't really see much when the cast is on. You can't really see too much of the shape or anything. But um, I think it was the way the cast was positioned or the way I was just looking at myself. But I felt like my nose was very turned up. And like I said in the beginning of the video, she did lift my tip. She did tell me that you'd be able to see my nostrils more easily um, after lifting my tip. And I was a little bit worried about that because I didn't want to look like miss piggy and have like my nose like way like turned up here and i felt like it looked like that a little bit with the cast and i was so terrified to look crazy because it's not like you can just like you know it's not like someone that just did bad makeup on you and you can just wipe it off and redo it like this is a whole surgical procedure but she took it off and i was like oh my god i like it oh, i was it was very emotional, but um, yeah, so <laughs> cast was off and I was back to regular life. So one thing that I wasn't prepared for initially, I didn't realize how long it actually takes rhinoplasty to heal. So depending on how thick your skin is, how your healing process is, it can take anywhere from 12 months to 18 months for rhinoplasty to completely heal. And I was like, when I heard that, I was like, it's a year for my nose to heal? And so what that means is not that you are gonna be like exposed and hurting and like the scars aren't gonna be healed for a year. There's a lot of cartilage in your nose and it takes the cartilage a while to heal and return from being so inflamed. So after surgery, my nose, even though the shape was different, the shape was, you know, a lot closer to what I wanted, if not exactly what I wanted, my nose was extremely inflamed because mind you, there was just cutting, sawing, stitching going on in this area. And what is your body's natural reaction to inflame? And so it takes a while for that process to undo itself. And so majority of the swelling, about 80% of the swelling after rhinoplasty goes down in the first three months, but it takes the next nine, at least nine months for the swelling to completely go away. So like I said, I am almost four months post-op, so I am not even halfway there. But I would say compared to where I was like one week post-op, I noticed a huge difference in the shape and just like the structure of my nose because every day I feel like the features are becoming more and more defined as the swelling goes down more and more. So I feel like when I first took my cast off, this was very like 
it was almost like out to here i didn't really have like a solid bridge to where i could see like really good definition i could see a good shape but i feel like there wasn't much this might be better than, there wasn't much like solid definition if that makes sense and so now as the days tick by i'm noticing more and more definition and i do have very thick skin and i do have very oily skin and which are both things that the doctor told me would increase my healing time of course oh one thing that i was also not prepared for so this is something that i had learned from like watching youtube videos here and there and i was warned about it before too um by my not my surgeon but her nurse practitioner she told me that especially when the cast is on i'm going to be extremely oily and that was an understatement <laughs> y'all i was so oily you could literally fry an egg on my nose like not only was my nose oily but all of my skin was just oily i was so oily and i feel like sometimes i'm still a little bit oily on my nose I'm oily at baseline, but I still feel like sometimes it's a little bit more than normal, but I was so oily and my pores were so clogged on my nose. It literally felt like speed bumps on my nose from having the cast on because it just like dirt gets stuck in there and it, it gets trapped in your pores. And so when I use that first pore strip after <laughs> my rhinoplasty, it's the most satisfying thing ever. One million blackheads came out when I did my first pore strip, but yes, Prepare to be extremely oily. It does get better, it goes back to normal, but for a while, your skin does become a lot more oily. So just heads up. So I wanted to touch on this subject. When I came out with this on Instagram, came out with it, when I uh, shared this information on my Instagram, people had asked like, how did my family, how did my boyfriend feel about it? I'm thankful that everyone in my life was pretty supportive. Of course, everyone gave me the whole like, you don't need it, you're a beautiful spiel, but I'm like, thank you, but I'm gonna get it anyways. Everyone was really supportive. There was no one in my life that was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're doing that. You know, I'm sure there's people that probably thought that and even said it behind my back, but as far as I'm concerned, everyone that was important to me in my life was supportive. And so I am very grateful for that. So I feel like I've rambled more than enough. <laughs> I feel like there's so much more that I could still even talk about with my rhinoplasty. But if you guys have questions about rhinoplasty, I can possibly make it a part two because I feel like there's still other things that we can get into. Let me know down below if you guys have questions, if this is something you're considering, if you have any questions for me and need any support, don't forget to follow me on Instagram for the most up-to-date information. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.